Okay, as I center myself, welcome everybody. Uh, we're now live. It's Thursday, July 6th. Hope everybody had a great July 4th. Hope everything's going well. New academic year. I won't go through all that craziness that everyone's going through, but I hope it's as painless as humanly possible. So today I'm going to speak about bladder cancer. Bladder cancer is one of the most common malignancies, and the role of CT there's several different roles, and I thought I would just review those with you. I've spoken a little bit about it before at different times. We have a lot of cases on the teaching file. We talk about it in misdiagnosis lectures. We talk about it in incidentaloma diagnosis. So a lot of things to look at. Now, if you look at the latest uh, SEER data, which is the statistics, Bladder cancer, estimated new cases in 2023, 82,290. It's about 4.2% of, of all cancers. The um, five-year relative survival is 77.9%, which is pretty good in great part, especially knowing that bladder cancer tends to be a disease of older patients. Um, the uh, lifetime risk of developing cancer Approximately 2.3% of men and women will be diagnosed with bladder cancer at some point during their lifetime. And it's estimated that there are almost three quarters of a million people living with bladder cancer in the United States. It's the sixth most common cancer. Remember breast, prostate, lung, colon, melanoma, and then bladder is number six. We speak a lot about pancreas. That's number 10, 64,000. But you can see that um, pancreatic cancer deaths were 50,000, bladder cancer only 16. So there's some good news with bladder cancer. There are also new therapies, new chemotherapies, radiation therapy, uh, all sorts of surgical management. Most common presentation is going to be hematuria. In terms of CT, we may stage bladder cancer. We also need to look at the bladder very carefully when we're doing hematuria. Remember, hematuria, adult, could be a stone, could be a renal tumor, be it a, a RCC or a transitional cell. We look at the ureters. We also look at the bladder. One challenge at times with the bladder is the bladder is not well distended. But one of the things we recommend, if you're doing an abdomen, give lots of oral contrast before and don't let the patient go to the bathroom. The subtlest bladder cancers are picked up as enhancing lesions in the bladder, and they may only be a centimeter or less in size. Remember that we've made the point that we often pick up incidental bladder cancers on things like an aortic evaluation, roulette aneurysm, do TAVR, older patients, which are more likely to get bladder cancer, Median age of diagnosis of bladder cancer is 73, so it's the same group where we're looking at aortic aneurysms or following aneurysms. The key thing is, if the bladder is not distended, that means if it's collapsed, you can have a tumor present, but unless it's really big, you're going to miss it. If the bladder is distended, you can see a subtle enhancement, and we make the point that any enhancement in the bladder is bladder cancer until proven otherwise. Now, one of the things to remember, I mentioned that I present bladder cancer in my misdiagnosis talk, because what happens is you're looking for aortic aneurysm, dissection, and the vascular stent, you name it, but the bladder is not important. But you're going to miss incidental bladder cancer, which can save the patient's life. So what we say is, and we used to miss them too. We don't miss them much anymore. Hopefully we don't miss them at all. But what we know with our faculty, residents, and fellows, always look at the bladder. If you're doing an aortic aneurysm, just give the bladder three seconds, and then you'll see something. If you see anything focally thick, and surely that's enhancing, usually 70 to 90 Hounsfield units, but it stands out really brightly because you're comparing it to urine. Then you want to say bladder cancer, suspicious, do cystoscopy. Okay, very, very simple. Patients with renal TCCs, yes, they're going to do cystoscopy, but look carefully at the bladder. For follow-up, remember TCCs are multifocal in 40% of cases. 
They may not be multifocal initially, but become multifocal. Bladder cancer, look at the kidneys. Kidney, look at the bladder. Look at the ureter in all cases. So that becomes very, very important as well. Now, it's interesting, in terms of bladder cancer, we talk about three types. Transitional cell, squamous cell, and adenocarcinoma. So, and a lot of the tumors are superficial bladder cancers. So they can be lasered or resected, and the patients will do very well. Obviously, with more aggressive tumors, cystectomy may be necessary, chemotherapy may be necessary. But again, it's one of the things we can look at very carefully. And again, it's not something you're looking at in younger patients. Uh, in the 45 to 54, it's only 2.5% of bladder cancers. 30% or so are in the 75 to 84 age group. And 32% are over 84. So, and that's in terms of deaths, but it's the little curve that patients are going to be older. In terms of um, male and female, usually when females, the tumors are picked up earlier, so the females actually have a better survival rate. Not that the tumors are going to be any different. Um, I think it's very, very important uh, in terms of bladder cancer when we're staging, what do we look at? Well, obviously you look at the lungs, you could have lung mets. You want to look at the liver, you can have liver mets. You can have multifocal disease in the kidney, you want to look carefully at that. We then talk about adenopathy. Yes, you're going to look in the periodic regions, at the aortic bifurcation by the iliac vessels, but then you're going to look at the pelvic side walls very carefully. You're going to look at the inguinal regions. Inguinal regions are less likely, but pelvic side wall, and in terms of bladder cancer, even small nodes, eight millimeter nodes, I do worry about. So even though things may be small, I do worry about them. So that becomes very, very important. Uh, any nodes. PET CT has not been all that helpful in this regard. People did lymphangiography. I think typically you have nodes of any consequence, the patient will get surgery and nodal dissection. What else can I talk about? We used to think about looking at the bladder, putting contrast in the bladder like a CT cystogram. CT cystograms are very good for looking for bladder trauma. They're very good for looking at colovesical fistulae. They're very good uh, for looking at anything where the bladder distension becomes very, very important. Remember 30 cc's of contrast in a 500 cc bag of uh, saline and then uh, dripping it in under gravity works very nicely in that regard. You get well distended bladder. Remember if the bladder is not distended, you'll miss bladder injuries because you may have blood in the pelvis compressing or you can't see the presence of extravasation unless there's contrast in the bladder and the bladder is expanded. That becomes very important as well. I do want to mention when you're looking at the bladder some potential errors. Patients often have bladder diverticuli, particularly near the UV junction. Look at the diverticuli carefully. I don't know how many cases I've seen of tumors in diverticuli. So you kind of ignore the diverticuli at times, or maybe there's some layering, and you assume it's just some debris or contrast material. Uh, be careful. People have also spoken about prone versus supine, trying to pick up lesions. I don't think that's necessary. Um, but again, the stension of the bladder is mandatory. So I recommend take a look at some of our talks on the bladder. Take a look at cases Think about your uh, protocols. Again, think about incidental bladder cancer. Obviously, bladder cancer, one of the causes of hematuria. Think about the analysis. Think about the protocols. Think about looking carefully at the kidneys, the ureters, and the bladder. It's one whole process, and we need to look at it very carefully. And with that, that's the bladder for today, and I'll see you next time. And let me see if any comments here. I don't see any comments. So I'll just have to say, have a great day, everybody.